everyone today i wanted to give you an update on our little chicks these are the chicks we ordered from murray mcmurray hatchery and they were shipped to us in the mail as day old chicks a few weeks ago here they are at one week old and they are still so cute but they have definitely doubled in size they've been settling really nicely into this brooder setup that we have for them and they've been running around a lot we also added this little mini roost in there just so that they have something to jump up on they've just started becoming more comfortable with us every time we feed them we call to them so that they know our voices and they're just starting to recognize that when we call them that means that there is food for them. They've also been getting along really well with each other. We haven't had any issues with any of the chicks picking on any of the other ones. And the other thing we've been making sure to keep an eye on is just to make sure none of them get poop stuck to their butts. And if they do, we just have to soak them in some warm water and dab it off gently so that they don't get clogged up. Every night once the sun sets and it gets dark out, they all go underneath their brooder together to sleep. We have a radiant heat brooder which is safer than a heat lamp and it's just really cute to see them all under there just piling up together. We've raised our brooder up to level 2 because they've started to get a little bit taller and also as they get older they don't need as much heat either. At this stage, it's still kind of hard to tell the chicks apart within each breed. When they're babies, their down patterns kind of look the same, but some of them have actually started to get in some of their wing feathers. So you can see them flapping them around and even taking short spurts of trying to fly. Some of them have even made it to the tops of their feeders and waterers. Speaking of which, they are going through water and food very quickly, so we have to make sure that we keep those topped off at all times so that they are healthy and growing. Before week one, they've just been eating their chick food, and as a treat, sometimes we'll soak some of it in water to make a little mush and feed it to them, and they've really been enjoying that. Anytime we mix this up and give them a call, they all flock right over. We also decided to start feeding them some greens after week one. So here are some dandelion greens. We weren't really sure if they would peck at it, but we decided we would just put it right down in the center. But all of them were just completely freaked out at first since they've never seen this before. They actually made a little like alarm chirp, which sounds very different from their like normal quiet and really mellow kind of peep. and they all just completely backed away from it. Eventually, some brave ones came forward and took a few pecks at it. Honestly, they really weren't into it that first day, but the next day we tried again and we just tore it into smaller pieces for them, and from then on, they were obsessed. So from weeks one to two, we would just give them a few little bunches of dandelion greens and chickweeds every day and just make sure to snip that really finely. As they get older, you don't need to cut them up as fine. But we did find that in the beginning, they didn't really know how to peck at things and break them up yet. So it was pretty necessary for us to do that for them. Kind of like the way a mother bird chews up food for a baby bird. Also, um, an important thing to know, anytime you're introducing something to your chick's diet that's not their normal chick food, you do want to make sure you give them some chick grit as well. This is basically just like small pieces of rocks and insoluble things, and they just eat this and it goes in their gizzard, so it helps them grind up anything that is not their normal chick food. Eventually when they figured out what dandelion greens were and that they actually liked them They would take little pieces and just run around with them and then other chicks would start chasing them And it's just really entertaining to watch eventually. They also learned to start smashing things against the ground with their beaks and using their beaks and their feet to tear things up into smaller pieces. They're still not really great at it at this point. It is really fun to witness them learning all of these new chicken qualities that they kind of just naturally know how to do. 
We started with just a few leaves at a time and we tried not to give them more than they could eat within a few hours. We didn't want their living area to get really dirty with all of these leaves that might make it a little mushy or gross. At just under two weeks, they have been jumping around a lot more and flapping their new wings. They can often be found hanging on top of their feeder and their waterer, also pooping in it, which is really gross. And it means that we have to change their water out like five times a day, which is kind of annoying. We also have this lid that Erin made for the top of the brooder just so that they don't fly out when we're not there with them because they have definitely had some escape attempts. More of them are starting to get their wings and they're even starting to get some of their little tail feathers. We've had a few days that have been really warm around here and I kind of just wanted to show you their behavior if they do get a little overheated. So you can see here all the chicks are away from the brooder, kind of just hanging out in the corners. They're kind of listless and lethargic. You can see that this barred rock actually has his mouth open and he's panting. So just make sure to keep an eye on that and try to keep the conditions as cool as possible if you see this happening. We started turning off the brooder during the day when the temperatures would get over like 90 degrees just so that they didn't have another source of heat. They also started around this time to dust bathe. That was something that was really funny to watch them do. Basically, they just like pick a little spot and they start digging a hole in there with their wings and flapping it around. You can see these few chicks here are actually sharing like one dust bath and trying to kick the other ones out so that they can enjoy it. It's pretty funny to watch. And I think they were doing it a lot on this day, especially because they were so warm. This is just one thing that they do to keep cool. This one here is one of our favorite chicks. He was the free chick that came with our order, so we're not completely sure what breed he is, but we think he's a blue cochin. And here he is making himself a little dust bath, and isn't he just the cutest chick? With all this dust bathing and heat and trying to escape, at week two, we decided to move them into their more permanent home. So we're moving them to their enclosed coop. It is to the best of our ability, safe from predators, and they are going to be staying in here 24 seven. They're not gonna be let outside, but this is just going to be a bigger space for them where they can fly around a little more and have more space to run around because they are outgrowing their smaller brooder setup that we have in our greenhouse. This will also help them stay a little cooler during the days because we do have some really hot temperatures coming up and our greenhouse, even though we have shade cloth over it, it gets really hot during the day. So we figured that moving them into their coop would keep them a little cooler because it is completely shaded. Like I mentioned, the chicks are two weeks old now. This might be a little young for most people to be moving their chicks to a more permanent location, but for us, we felt that it worked because we know that this coop is completely safe. And also with our temperatures being fairly warm, we feel like this is a perfectly comfortable place for them to be, and they're still going to have their brooder in there with them as well. So we just brought them over a few at a time in a five gallon bucket. The first few just found this one little corner that they flocked to and then every time we would bring new chicks they would just run right over to where all of their brothers and sisters were because they just really like to stick together. That first day, they were definitely a little disoriented. They really liked to flock to this one corner, even though their brooder and their food and water were in different parts of the coop. 
But this is just like the first corner they, that they discovered and they kind of just stayed there because they thought it was their safe place for the day. So we just let them do their thing. We put everything in there that they needed so that they could find it when they needed it. And we just let them get accustomed to their new home. With this bigger space, we were able to provide them with some upgrades to their food and water systems. So we did have their old water there just so that they had that option. We also added this hanging bucket water that has little nipples on the underside. And this way it stays cleaner for them just because like I mentioned, they do really like to perch on top of their water and poop into it, which is really gross and as you can imagine, unsanitary. So just having this hanging option um, just is a little more hygienic for them. They didn't really know how to use it at first just because they've never had one of these or seen it before. So here I am just trying to show them how to use it using my finger, just tapping it and showing them where it is. None of them really caught on while I was recording this. Sometimes they would come up and peck at the water that was on my finger, but it, it really took them a while to catch on. So hopefully this will work out in the long run and they'll figure it out. We also added a larger hanging feeder that can hold a lot more food. At this time, after two weeks with our 16 chicks, they've already gone through 25 pounds of food. So it's plenty of food and they definitely go through it quickly. We also have their radiant heat brooder in the corner and we just keep that on for them so that they have the option to go under there at all times. And by the way, the brooder is now on its highest level. We also made sure to tape off their nesting boxes so they don't fly in there and poop since they're not going to be laying anytime soon. By the second day that they were in their new home, everyone seemed to be settled in and felt very comfortable. We started to spend more time in there hanging out with them. We would tear them up little pieces of greens and just put them out on our fingers so that they could peck them directly from us. And we really liked how having them in this larger space where we could be on the same level with them, we were able to interact with them in this way that we weren't able to in the other brooder. They seemed to be getting a lot more comfortable with us since they could see our whole bodies and we weren't coming at them from above. A lot of times when we would sit there, they would hop up onto our feet, our arms, our knees, and it was just really fun to see them warming up to us and getting comfortable with us. We've been feeding them lots of greens as well. They really love dandelion greens, which is perfect because we have plenty of those. They also really like chickweed and radish tops and overgrown arugula. So anything that is coming out of the garden that we don't eat is not going to waste because we can feed it to them, which is really awesome. You might be able to notice, but a lot of them have lots of feathers now. And a lot of the ones that looked the same within the same breed are starting to look more different from each other because as their feathers come in, you can see more differences in their patterns. So especially our Americanas, I feel like you can see a lot of difference between them because before they looked exactly the same, we couldn't even tell them apart. But now some of them have more gray feathers, some of them have more stripy feathers. So it's really exciting to see them kind of look a little more like what they're going to look like as adult chickens. I hope you guys enjoyed this update of our chicks. We'll be posting more so that you can follow along and watch them grow with us. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and we'll see you again in the next video.